All right, welcome everyone here to Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church. Uh, we're so glad to be here. It's another beautiful day. God just continues to bless us, and it's good. It's good. The title of the sermon today is Changing Times. Changing Times. You know that uh, we're going through a lot of changing times in our country, in the world right now, and all through the Bible they had changing times. So we're going to touch on some of those today. <clears throat> Let's start with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Changing times. Skylar, if you will, give us our scripture back there for today, please, sir. Chapter 14. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea beside Pihahiroth before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you, so shut your mouth. You know, a lot of times our own words gets us in more trouble than anything else. Uh, and as we study the changing times and as we see what's going on in our world, we see what's going on in our life, we have to look to God to help us through these times because they're difficult times even if we're not suffering physical uh, ailments and physical items that's going on in our life. We're dealing with mental stress. We're dealing with financial stress. We're dealing with all kinds of things that are taking place and changing in our life. And we can't understand it sometimes, and we don't know what the end result will be, but we know we can count on God to see us through. You know, as we look at this uh, scripture for today, we see that God is inviting his estranged children to be emancipated or freed not only to release them from the oppression that they're going through, but to meet them in the wilderness to worship him. I want you to understand that they had not had a conversation with God for 400 years. 400 years they were in captivity. They are the people of God. They are born to be with God. But they have not had a real relationship with God for 400 years. In part because their uh, association, assimilation with the Egyptians. Their association and assimilation with the Egyptians started out as a blessing and ended up as a curse. It started out as a blessing because there was a famine in the land back in Israel. And so Jacob moved his family over to Egypt because Joseph was the second in command there. And 
They needed to get corn. They needed to get things to survive the famine that was taking place. Everything that starts out as a blessing doesn't always end up as a blessing. You know, we have a, a part to play in that. But it was a wonderful thing when it started out. So the first 30 years that they were there, they were blessed. It was wonderful. But when the Pharaoh died, there was a new Pharaoh that was appointed there that didn't know Joseph and didn't know Joseph as God, didn't, didn't have no respect for them. Matter of fact, uh, one of the people came up and said, these Hebrews are getting so big that, that one day we, they may try to take us over, so let's enslave them. And so the Pharaoh did. And he enslaved them, and they were slaves there for some 400 years. And God knew it. Not only did God know it, God arranged it. Not only did God arrange it, but God prophesied to Abraham that this was going to happen. He said, your seed is going to sojourn into Egypt. For 400 years and afterward, they will come out with great substance. There is an expectation, an expiration date on trouble. You know, there's a time for uh, trouble and there's a time for it to end. There's a time for everything under the seasons of God. If there was a date that you would go in, then there's a date when you're going to come out. But there, this was a divine prophecy of God. They were not there because they were subservient, less qualified, less capable, less brilliant than the Egyptians. They were there by a divine prophecy whereby God incubated Abraham's seed from a family into a nation. Amen. In order for him to incubate the greatness into them, there was pressure had to put, be put upon them. But they were no less than the Egyptians that they served, but they were forced to serve the Egyptians for 400 years. Moses had come to emancipate them from 400 years. Emancipation means to free them. Wherever Egypt, when they wanted them and tried to keep them there, God knew that one day there would come a time when they would be freed and he would send a man. There comes a point where you become unfamiliar with your own ways and you start shifting your ways into the ways that you're living in now it depends on the environment that you're placed in if you are put in another nation then you will have to learn to speak the language of that nation in order to survive you will have to do the things that you have to do within that nation to survive. Something happened, though, then. They left. They changed. They died. You're standing there trying to figure out, who am I? I'm a Hebrew living in the, in the Egyptian land. I'm a slave but I'm as smart as the people that I'm having to serve. I have the abilities to do even greater things than the one that they're serving because I have the ability to build these great buildings. I can even work with bricks without straw. Whatever you put upon me, I'm capable of doing because we are the children of God. These are the people who have no sense of 
real identity at this point, real understanding of their language. Their food is gone, and now their cuisine is gone. Their uniqueness is gone, and their religion has been aborted. They have assimilated to the environment that they're in for survival. Survival necessitates something that you adapt and adopt to the situation that you're in. You know, even psychologists say that captive people, if they're kept captive long enough, will build a relationship with the person that captive them. And our Creator so endowed us with the ability to adapt that no matter what climate we're in or what physical uh, situation that we're in, that no matter what emotional situation that we're developed into, regardless of what the circumstances are, we have the ability to adapt. Because we have a strong survival instinct on the inside of us, a strong survival instinct, survival instinct. We want to hold on, but we have to adapt. We wouldn't be sitting here today if you didn't have a strong survival instinct. Your heart has been broken Life has been altered. Disappointment. We've gone through pandemics. We've gone through the loss of loved ones. We've gone through different things that's taken place. Our economy is changing. Everything about our life is different than it was. You don't get everything you wanted. Everything don't turn out like you thought it ought to turn out. But once you're in this situation, you adapt to the situation. There's poverty, and it exceeds the income. It causes massive problems in our ability to pay what we need to pay from day to day. But we need to know who we are. You know, we call ourselves Christians, but we need to know who we are. We need to find our identity. They had left Egypt to rediscover themselves by reconnecting with their God. You will never find yourself. You will never find your identity. You will never find your self-esteem without your connection to Almighty God. But their taste buds had changed. It had changed to what the Egyptians had. Their image of God had changed. So when they left and they built an image of God, it resembled the God of the Egyptians. You remember Moses went up on the mountain. When he came back down, they had made a, a calf that, had just appeared. Nobody wanted to claim responsibility for it, but it was there. Isn't it amazing how quick we forget what God is in our life and what he means to us? And we often wonder, is God even there? Is he willing to do something for us? But God is always there, and he's always willing to do something for it. People say I'm spiritual. Kind of language. I don't want to lose. Your language that God gave you. You want to hold on to. But you're willing to adapt. If you're in a situation. Where you have to adapt. In, in part because you need to fit in. You need to be connected. 
You need to be fresh. Accepted. By other people. By employers. By CEOs. By companies. By entrepreneurship. You, by women. By men. You, you will change who we are to try to impress somebody else as to who we are. We change who we are to try to get them to uh, notice us. You're, oh, you're out of style, you know. You're out of date. You're old school. You know, sometimes we try to force ourselves to fit into certain situations trying to revert back to what we were. In other words, you got to contort back because now the styles have changed. And I'm sick of styles. We spend all our time buying different stuff, trying to fit in with what's here today. You know, I tried on an old suit the other day that was in the closet, and, you know, people would say that it's out of style, but I like the old suit. It fit just fine, and, and I don't wear the thing because I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm trying to do what God wants me to do. Style every week changes to make you have to buy again and again to try to Fit in, investing your money, breaking yourself, going to the point of credit card debt to where you can't afford and it's breaking everything about you and your life. Too much of our energy is spent trying to reconcile with men when we need to spend our time reconciling with God. Amen. We're trying to be with people. We're trying to be involved, and we want to be in shape and develop the language that we're able to talk to. We want to get applause. We want people to clap for us. We're ashamed to say things that we used to be proud of saying, like, I love my wife. I care about my family. I take care of my husband. I make sure that he is good before I leave. But I would dare you to post any of these things on media because you would be immediately attacked for these things. It's not that they're wrong to be them, but it's that they want you to act like them. Sometimes it's wrong when you, if your values are not in the same place as their values. In other words, you're going to be the one that's wrong, not them. But God said, I want you to be reconciled. Second Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The word, who's the word? Jesus is the word. Glory be to God. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though Christ did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him who Jesus, for he had made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus became sin and died so that I may have righteousness and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory be to God today. Isn't God good? All the time God is good. It's a fight that we have with men. It's a fight we have with women, with generations, with denominations, with ethnicities. We have wars. I've, I'm tired of it. Is anybody else tired of all this mess going on? Tired of twisting and turning and reshaping yourself into the kind of configuration so you can fit in with somebody else. By the time you get it all worked out, the style has changed again. Until you're, until you're afraid to be yourself because you need to fit in, it trumps the need to be who you are. Now, you don't know who you are. So you've got to go back and hit reboot, just like you do on a computer to get a fresh start to find out who you are. Go back to the manufacturer. Go back to God. Say, who did you create me to be? That's a question we all or to ask God and figure out the answer to, God, who did you create me to be? That's who I want to be. What did you have in mind for me? What have you designed for my life? What have you in store for me? God, what is my destiny? Help me to reach my destiny. Don't let them shape my life. God, you shape my life. You know... I've been what my mama said. I've been what my daddy said. I've been what my friends said. The gang said. I, I've been so many different things. I've, I've been in what the denomination said, what the board said, what the school said as they wanted to promote me to the next level. Now I don't even know who I am because I tried so hard to fit into all these different things that people were pushing me to be. I'm a little bit of Hebrew. I'm a lot Egyptian. A lot of the Egyptian is left in me, though I'm free from them now. I prayed that God would send a deliverer and when he, the answer came, I rejected what I had prayed for. I didn't know it was going to affect me like it did. Come on, somebody. Come on now. I didn't know it was going to affect me like it did. And even though I prayed for it and I asked God for it and I sought him for it and everything was happening at that time and all of a sudden now I see that there's a battle taking place in my life because I've received the promise of God. But what do I do with it? What do I do with it? The text takes us to a place where there's a battle be between the gods. There's a battle between the Elohim, who is the God of the universe, and Pharaoh, who thinks he's God. Pharaoh who runs the country now. You have to realize that in that time, he, Egypt was a superpower. They were strong. They had the Hebrews building all of these big things all over Egypt. Anyone who stands in between me and God, as I'm being reconciled to him, 
God will move them out of the way. Have you ever went and tried to help someone and by the time you got in the, in the middle of it, uh, you were the problem and, and the problem that they were having was no longer the problem. I found that a lot in police work where you go out and you get in a domestic situation and where the husband and wife are having a major problem and all of a sudden you become the problem. You become the problem. The most dangerous thing that you could do is get between me and God. If me and Jane are mad at each other, if we're fussing with one another, it would be smart for you to stay out of it. Because we may argue and we may disagree, but we're going to make up here in, in a few days, a few hours. And if you get between us, you're going to be in trouble sure enough. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Don't get in the middle of it. It would be foolish for you to get in between us because the ties that bind us is bigger than the argument that tries to divide us. It's a temporary argument. It's not going to last because love is going to win the fight. Love is going to take what is and makes it better. God said all things work together for good to them that love God to call according to his purpose. Don't you try and be the broker. We were created in God's image. So don't get between me and God when I'm created in his likeness, created in his image. If I'm trying to get between you, if Pharaoh tries to get between the Hebrews and God, God will bring him down. Ask Paul and Silas, who were praying in the jail cell at midnight, and the jail was trying to stand between Paul and Silas and God. And God sent an earthquake and tore down the whole place. If you start crying out to God, I don't care who your oppressor is. God will defeat your oppressor when you want to be connected to God because God loves you and God loves me. You know, I can't explain it, but he loves me. I can't explain it, but he's for me. <laughs> I can't explain it, but he wants me. He's literally moving heaven and earth to be with me. This is the kind of God we serve. He came down through 42 generations just to get to me. Hallelujah. Even though you may think I look funny, I'm out of shape. You may think I'm a no good old man, ain't good for nothing. He thinks I'm the apple of his eye. Amen. Altogether loving, full of truth and glory. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and, and not beneath. If you get in between me and him, he will move you out of the way. You know, I started on a hunt for... Pharaoh to try to find out which Pharaoh it was <clears throat> and you know it was hard to find out and I don't know if it still was Ramesses the second or not but Ramesses the second was one of the most powerful people that there was in the time but Egypt just wouldn't just wasn't a country it was the superpower like I said the country if you ever go to a country where they have a king and not a democracy, not a government. If you say that you're flying out and you can't get out of there because the king said you can't go, there's 
don't have any judicial system. They don't have no courts. They don't have anything to come against what the king says. If the king says it, that's the way it is. And that's just the way God is. If God said it, that's the way it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even though they sent all of the chariots after them, all of the chariots were destroyed. Everything was destroyed that came after them. You notice that the verse said, These Egyptians who follow us that you see now, you will see no more again forever. Your problems that you're dealing with now, get with God, and these problems you won't have to deal with again forever, ever, because God loves you. You'll have buildings that you didn't build. You'll have vineyards that you didn't grow. God's going to make sure that you get back everything that the canker worm has taken from you, everything that the devil's tried to steal with you because God is a just God. Amen. God is a just God. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to contain. This is the God that we serve. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He loves you. He has moved heaven and earth to be with you because he cares for you. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Who all wants to be included in the closing prayer? I see hands all over the church. Father, we just thank you for another glorious day.